Hello everyone, this is part two of my series on the conversion of my Baldwin C630T analog organ to MIDI. And in this video, I will be showing you the two different types of key switches that you are likely to encounter in organs from this time period made by Baldwin. The first one on the left is the silver rail key switch, and the one on the right is the elastomer key switch. As you can see, the silver rail one is exactly that. It has a silver rail, which is common among the key switch, and these little thin silver wires are pressed against the silver rail, which turns on the note. On this one, it's a little different. There's a rubbery elastomer substance here, and these wires, instead of being silver, are gold. And as the gold wires are pressed up against the elastomer, in this case, it gradually reduces the resistance and turns on the note. In order to understand why elastomer key switches were used, I'm going to read the description right from the manual. In order to prevent an explosive tonal attack when the instrument keys are played, controlled attack key switch contacts are employed. These contacts consist of a conductive elastomer header and gold clad contact wires. The individual generator signal outputs are connected to the contact wires through isolation resistors. Depressing an organ key causes the contact wire, one of several sets for that key, to touch and then travel across the header strip. Initially, the small area of contact offers a high resistance to the tone generator signal. Further depression of the key gradually lessens the resistance, giving a gradual on effect as the area of contact between the wire and elastomer increases. The isolation resistors are incorporated to eliminate tone generator interaction between pitches simultaneously keyed. In addition, header resistors are utilized to attenuate the signal properly with respect to the bass and treble ends of the keyboard range, thereby more closely imitating the orchestral effects of the various instruments. Fortunately, the gradual on effect is not something we want to use when we're retrofitting MIDI into the instrument. So we just have to look to see which key switches are the silver rail type. Unfortunately, not every manual has them, and this is different depending on the instrument, of course, but in this particular instrument, the swell manual does not have any silver rail key switches. The great, only the top three octaves where it says Celesta, plus a few notes, are silver rail, but thankfully with the pedal, the entire range of the pedal board has silver rail contacts. And essentially, there's multiple key switches per note, and they are arranged by pitch. And usually, the ones on the very top are either the highest pitch and or the silver rail contacts for percussions. On the pedal, it's a little different because the lower pitches use the silver rail contacts because they're fed through a gated circuit. But it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be disconnecting one row of them per manual and using them for the MIDI system. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the key switches in this and many other Baldwin instruments are of the elastomer variety. There's an easy way to get around this though. All you need is a standard piece of ground wire that you would find in 14 American wire gauge wire. Essentially, it's the stuff in your walls that you use for standard circuits. You can just go to the store and buy some NMD90 or if you're in the US, NMB, strip the vinyl sheathing off and use the ground wire. So what I like to do is I like to cut it much longer than needed. So first we have to get the elastomer out, and it really comes out easily. Just use a screwdriver, a little screwdriver, to peel it up and gently tug it out. And be careful not to bend the gold wires while you're doing this. It just slides right out. Like so. Now, we have to get the copper wire where the elastomer was. And if you look at the silver silver rail method, essentially it's going to be the same thing, but instead of silver on silver, it's going to be gold on copper, but the effect is the same. So you take the copper wire and make sure it's cut with a nice pair of side cutters, or preferably side cutters over wire cutters, because they will make sure the ends of the wire are really nicely shaped like that, which will make them easier to get in. And then you just have to gently, oops, see these pins bend really easily, so it's good to have a little pair of pliers. If one of them breaks off, it's not the end of the world. You just don't want multiple of them breaking off. And then you just gently slide it in like so. And use the little screwdriver to shape the wire. 
And I like to keep it right up against the uh, circuit board. Even though the silver rail switches is a little bit forward, it's just easier to get it to stay right up against the circuit board. And these gold wires can actually be adjusted so that the attack is the same between the two types of switches. And it's very simple to do. You just essentially carefully bend these wires when they're in place. So just like this, we carefully straighten the wire as it goes in and push it underneath these metal clips. Try to keep the wire as straight as possible, as always. It leads to consistency. Almost there. And the last one, since it's so small, I like to bend it up a little bit. And then you push it in a little bit further than it's supposed to go. And there's a reason for that. In the case of someone using a matrix system, which is what I will be using, there the key switches are the keyboards are divided into groups of 12. And this is very convenient because these banks of key switches are already in groups of 12. But the key thing is that you have to keep the grounds of each isolated from each other. And you don't want these little ends of the ground wire rubbing against the other key switch banks because they get really close to each other in the organ. So what I like to do is I cut it after a little bit sticking out. Like that. Push it back and just keep trimming it down until it's really, really close to the side. Of course, all as always, be gentle with these circuit boards. They're not very, del or they're, they are very delicate. They're not very strong and then you just push it in so it's flush perfect then just make sure you push it right up against the back and the final step is to crimp these down these little tabs to keep the copper wire from moving I know I've said this already, but just watch out for the gold wires. They are very delicate. Sometimes it doesn't like to go completely flush, but you can just hold it in like that and crimp it down so it won't move. And the same thing with the other end. And there, you have a silver rail key switch, except with golden copper. One last thing I will mention is that if you have the opportunity to use the silver rail contacts, i.e. If, if you have any of them in the instrument, and chances are at least the pedal board will use them, definitely use them as it will reduce the amount of work you have to do. And like I said, 
retrofitting this organ is a big job and you don't want to cut corners, but if there's a logical way to reduce the amount of work you have to do, definitely take it. The next video will feature these key switches all put back in the organ and I will describe the wiring methods I will be using since I'm using a matrix system. So that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.